up guys, welcome back. I had to take a couple days off out here. Went and caught myself a sniffle. I would've kept working out here, but I'm married. I gotta get back up there again to grab those tail lights. I should've brought them down with me last time. But after that, we're gonna mess around with this bumper. See if we can do something cool with it. I had two sets, but what I have is three lefts and one right. And the one on the right has a crack on the back side. Can we fix it? So I want to do something with this bumper. I have another one that's in really good shape. This one's kind of bent up, so I figure I can mess around with this one, and then it doesn't matter if I screw it up. There really isn't any screwing up when you're building your own custom car, though. It's only metal. It can be fixed, changed, whatever. Actually, we don't make mistakes, only happy accidents. When things like that happen, you usually end up with something way better. When you do something and you don't like how it turned out, it's usually a good thing because you develop your idea and you develop your, your technique as you're screwing it up. That's how I learned the best. Anyway, I actually thought about cutting both bumpers up and kind of grafting them into into one that fits the body a little bit better and it's a little bit taller so it sits a little closer to the ground but I don't know there's things that I want to leave with this truck because it's a Chevy Love and at the end of the day I want it to still look like a Chevy Love but what I change I want it to look like it's supposed to be that way I want it to look good I don't want to change something just to change it is what I'm saying like these vents here so many people shave them off but it's a characteristic of this truck and I want to leave it but what I might do is do something more like, like a hot rod type louver like that. Maybe if I did a few of those on here instead, I don't know. The bed hooks, a lot of people get rid of them too. I'm gonna leave them. I just think it really says classic vintage mini truck. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen here, but we gotta start somewhere. We're gonna shave these bolts. I'm going to take a little bit out of here to bring that closer to the fender so it fits a little better. I'll probably get rid of this license plate area too. It's restricting some airflow to the radiator and I think it'd be cool if I made some sort of billet grill like this that would fill this area and eventually make a whole billet grill that would match that one. But again, keeping it characteristic to the love, I'll just kind of remake that. So let's start by getting rid of these carriage bolts. Like everything, there's a lot of correct ways to do this. I've seen people just weld a bolt in the hole, flush with the head of the bolt. I've seen people cut the cap of this carriage bolt off so it's just a square head, weld that in there. I've seen people weld it from the inside, then grind the head off and then weld that smooth. I've done a few of those ways, but I'll tell you today how I found that I like to do it I like to start by leaving the bumper on because I know that everything is in its final place. So I'm not gonna weld a bolt in there a little bit crooked compared to how it's gonna be happy when it's on the truck. You see that there, right there? You can see how that when this bumper is tightened up that it kind of puts a little dimple around that carriage bolt. So I've had that crack around where I welded when I tightened it up. So my work around that is to leave it the way it is and use those dimples to my advantage by giving me something, some, some more room to put some weld in. We're gonna start with probably the most important tool in the shop. This thing is great for cutting things in half. And that's what we're gonna do with this carriage bolt. Supervisor's checking in on me again.
So you can see there that we've exposed half of that square part of that carriage bolt. It's not even in there square. So with half of it still being there, it's still doing its job. So now we can get in there with our glue machine and get that square welded to the bumper. Just some good tack welds for now. Then we'll cut off the other half, weld it up real good, grind it smooth, move on to all the other ones. Seven of them. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these lights yet, so I'm gonna take them off because I don't want the heat from the welder to mess up the light buckets or the lenses or anything. I think that'd be a good idea. Because if I don't use them, one of you love guys out there might. All right, game on. So now this one's all tacked into place, it's cleaned up, and it's ready to weld. I'm gonna be using a straight edge to keep an eye on how tall that weld gets. Because the more that stays on there, in that dimple that that bolt made, the stronger this bolt's gonna hold. Because once this bumper is painted or chromed, if that cracks out on you, that's a bad day. Definitely not a happy accident. We'll also be welding them from the other side where we can. We don't wanna put any weld where it's not gonna sit against the bracket flush but having some weld on that other side where there's room is a good idea. In my mind anyway. I mean, I'm no professional and somebody will probably tell me a better way because somebody always knows better. All right, we got that close to flush there and you can see that there's some areas around there from where that bumper was dimpled in. We're gonna fill that up in with weld and grind that smooth. Good thing the supervisors didn't see that. Do some more welding. That right there is as close as we're gonna get that one. We're gonna move on, do the other ones, but we're not gonna do them all one at a time. We're just gonna work our way around it, keep going till all eight are as done as that one is. Sorry guys, you all right? you guys watch Magic Man Metal Fab? If you haven't seen his channel before, link's down below. You can also find it in the featured channel section of my homepage. He got called off to Puerto Rico for work, so he's been real busy with that. He was well on his way to reaching his goal with watch hours, and then he got called off. He's a really good guy. I consider him a friend. 
So let's help him out and watch some of his videos. If you've seen him before, watch him again. He does some really cool stuff down there in Florida. Do your thing down there, Jay. Make that money you have to. Dream up some cool ideas for when you get back. We'll take care of your watch hour. All right, we got these top four, not done, but all in a similar state. I'll do the bottom four later. No need to bore you with doing that again. What I wanna do now is make this whole bumper a little shorter, bring it a little closer to the body. I think if we took an inch off each end, it'd look pretty nice. And later on, we'll be taking some out of the brackets too to bring it closer that way. I was kind of thinking maybe taking two inches out of the center would have been the way to go. But then again, if we did that, we would have had to weld these bolts in in a different place and we'd still have a bunch of work. So I think the way that I'm gonna do this is since I decided that I'm not gonna be using these factory turn signals here, I'm gonna take it out of there on this side of the bolts. Because if I take it out of there, I'm gonna be messing around with all this anyway. So if I were to take that out of somewhere else, then I'm just making more work in another area where I might as well be doing it all in the same place. Yeah. We're gonna take an inch out right here. That's pretty close. Conveniently, this is exactly one inch. So I'm just gonna put that up to the edge and where I sprayed that primer, I'm gonna put a scribe line where it needs a trimming. Yeah, that'll work. Once the brackets are shortened and the bumper goes in, that's gonna be right along the curve of that fender. Clamp a straight edge on there. Make sure we can get that top just about perfect. even though that's a bumper, it's technically an Isuzu bumper and it's very thin. So I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna let that cool. We'll open some mail we got. This is from T Fit in Washington. I happen to know his name is Troy and all you YouTubers out there, get yourself a subscriber like Troy. He's a good dude. Oh dang. So he sent me a picture of a smoker that he made out of an old refrigerator from like, I don't know, was it the 40s or something? We got some smoked cheeses. Everybody that knows me knows I'm not interested in that. <laughs> the wife will love it though. It's like some smoked salmon, peppers. I don't know what that is. Smoked salmon dip, that's what that is. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate this. I appreciate all you guys. I'm gonna go show my wife. Tell her, see, I told you I had friends in the garage. You guys see what I see? Something's missing. We need to do something about this. I think we'll whip up a little filler panel here just to kind of finish off the end of this bumper.
Little things like that make the biggest difference. I like that. So I gotta get these lower bolts and that end caught up to what we've done here today. Then I can take the bumper off, finish up the back side, decide how I'm gonna tuck it in closer to the front, whether that's cutting the brackets and welding them back together or just reaming out those holes three quarters of an inch. I don't know yet. And this bumper is made out of 16 gauge and I don't have any right now. And what I wanna do is shave these light holes. I don't think I need them anymore. So I'm gonna repeat what we just did. All right, I got that side caught up to that one. I got those lower carriage bolts caught up to the ones that we did earlier. Take the bumper off, do some cleaning in here. And we can continue on with this project tomorrow. It's all about momentum and motivation. So make sure you guys come back next week and see how this turns out. See you out there.